In this video, we're going to take a brief look at angular momentum and torque. So what we're going to talk about here are really is closely related to what you saw in video number 15 in our uh, series of analytical mechanics. Um, a reminder that the playlist for all the videos is featured at the website digital-university.org. Now, what you saw in video number 15 was we had just a particle moving and it had a momentum vector like this and then we said well suppose we're here at point Q and from where we are we draw a position vector up to the tail of the momentum vector and this we call it RQ. Only now for torque what we're concerned with is a force vector. And then it's the same thing though instead of taking R cross P we're going to take R cross F. But as you saw in video number 15 this really does not have much meaning by itself. We have to know which point are we doing this in reference to. Of course, we're doing it with point Q. So that is the torque. About point Q. Now, as you know, of course, this is the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times the sine of the angle between them. There's no news there really. What, where the torque comes in is when you have a fixed axis and when you apply a force then you get a rotational movement. So if this then, our point Q was where we had a fixed axis say and then we have applied a force like this, I think we can see then that we would get a turning in this direction. Now the direction of the torque can be determined um, two ways. If by the situation, uh, by the geometry of the situation, you can tell which rotational direction the force is causing, then all you have to do is wrap your fingers in the right hand in the directions of that rotation and your thumb, which is hard to show here, points in the direction of the torque. In this case, it points downward. So here then, the magnitude of the torque, that's just the magnitude of the force times the radius vector times the sine of the angle between them, just as it was with the angular momentum. And here now, the way this is set up, the torque is pointing into the page. The other way to determine the direction of the torque is when we're considering the cross product. We're here. That's the position vector R. Here is the vector F. When we take the cross product now, they have to be tail to tail, so we would have it like this. Now, when we take the cross product, we use the right hand rule. We're using the fingers of our right hand to align the position vector with the force vector. And of course, when we do that, the thumb is pointing downward. So again, we determine that the direction of the torque is down. So we can determine the direction of torque in one or two ways. If the uh, if it's clear just by looking at um, the geometry of the situation that you can tell which direction of rotation the force is causing, then just wrap the fingers of your right hand around that ro directional rotation and your thumb points in the direction of the torque, in this case downward or considering it as a cross product, aligning the vectors tail to tail, and then using the right hand rule. Either way works.
And other than that, we don't have much more to say about the torque because it is so much uh, similar to the angular momentum, and we've discussed that already quite a bit of detail in that back in uh, video number 15. But one thing we can consider is if we have, let's say, we have this kind of situation. Say a particle is moving with the velocity v like this. And again, we're here, say a point q. And we have a position vector, rq. The angular momentum with respect to point q, that's the cross product of the radius vector with the not with the velocity, but with the momentum, mass, times the velocity. Now, what we did not do in the previous videos is consider what happens if we take the derivative of the angular momentum with respect to time. So let's do that right now. Here we have this cross product, so that will equal the derivative of this with respect to time. Plus this, the cross product with that derivative. So we get this kind of an expression. But dr dt, the rate of change of the position vector, that is the linear velocity of the particle. So we can write it like this. v cross the momentum, which is mv, plus r. And the derivative of momentum with respect to time, that of course is the force. So we have this kind of equation. This cross product is zero because we have velocity cross velocity. Um, the angle between them is zero and the sine of zero is zero. And this is the torque. And we are doing this with respect to point Q. In fact, we should put the Q in here. So we see that the time derivative of the angular momentum equals the torque. So if there is no torque, or to be more explicit, if there are no external torques on our system, then the rate of change of the angular momentum is zero, or in other words, the angular momentum is constant. And that's true then only though in, in situations where there is no net external torque. And again, um, in future videos, we'll consider those situations in more detail when we start to solve specific problems. In the next video, what we're going to do is consider, again, angular momentum, but also how the center of mass plays a role, too. So join us for that video.